What's going on, my people? Hello, hello, hello. Let's get it, y'all. Look, welcome to Wednesday. Janine already said it. Happy Wednesday. Hello, hello. How are we doing tonight? Let's get it, y'all. We're not going to tarry long. You know I got a 15-minute window, and I try to stay in it. Welcome to class. I'm going to just say my face. <laughs> Let's get it, y'all. It's Wednesday. Let's rock out. All right, so the mission for extreme teachers is to help teachers discover their superpowers and then transform the lives around them. We want to help them find their superpower and then help them transform the lives around them. That's what we do in extreme teachers. All right. And then being extreme makes them that teacher. When I say that teacher, I mean that teacher that's willing to go beyond the walls of their classroom to impact the lives of their students. That teacher. Let's go. All right, repost, tag a teacher, repost, tag a teacher. Thanks, Jeray, for tagging folks every night. I appreciate that. So tag a teacher for me, ladies and gentlemen. Tag a teacher. Let them know. Just share. Either way. All right, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. At Valari Humphrey. How we doing, Janine? How we doing on the YouTube channel? Are we up? I, last night, I think we got to 300. So let's see if we're going to get over 300. So I have to set a new goal. And it's Thursday. It's Wednesday. So I need to set a new goal. So hmm, let's set a new goal at 325. I think we do 25 a week. So share it with your friends and your family. Let's get it up there. All right. So we want to get to 325 by Monday. Let's see what we can do. Let's go. All right. So last night we talked about What happened? Oh, no, Janine. I got to go look. We was at 300 last night. All right. We'll worry about it later. All right. So last night we talked about top techniques to create a positive dialogue between students and teachers. So we talked about create a safe environment. We talked about um, more teamwork. We talked about don't stand at the front of the classroom. Another thing was active listening. And then we talked about positive feedback. And the culminating point was nurturing this kind of interactive and engaging teaching environment demands regular and effective communication. All right, let's rock and roll. Tonight, we are talking about promoting critical thinking into all aspects of instruction. Promoting critical thinking in all aspects of instruction. Let's go. Now, this was kind of interesting to me. I, I like this one tonight. It says, begin lesson units with probing question with a probing question. I like that. That was good. And then it said, it shouldn't be a question that you can answer with yes or no. So basically, it's an open question. It's not a closed question where it's just one answer, one and done. All right. It says, these questions should inspire discovery, learning, and problem solving. Now, what else did they say? That's all they said about that one. So I just copied all of that information. Let's go. Next, it said, encourage creativity. Mm. I have seen teachers prepare projects before they give it to their students many times. Yes. For example, designing snowmen or other creative projects. I love that. Because now you know what they're going through. You know the process that they're going through and you can help them go through the process. But when you haven't gone through the process and you're trying to teach the process, I must shout out Miss Evenhouse. Miss Evenhouse used to work with me at Steel Middle School. Miss Evenhouse would read six and seven books over the summer. She would read all of the books that her students were going to read. And I thought that was so amazing. It was just, it was cool to me because I always taught math. So we didn't have books or anything like that. So it was just great. And then it says, by the design work, by doing the design work or by cutting all the circles out beforehand, it removes creativity options. Mm. Encourage creativity. Snowman doesn't have to be three round circles. It can be squares. Like encourage creativity. I know that's simple, but yet it can, for them, it's next level. All right. Another one. This says... Oh, let me read something about encourage creativity before we go there. Then they said it may help the classroom to run more smoothly if your child's materials are there and prepared for them. 
but every student project should not look, it doesn't have to look the same unless you want it to. You have to know how you want the project to come out. If it's a creative project and they can go all in, then loosen up. Everything doesn't have to be cookie cutter, okay? It may help your classroom if you allow your students to make the decisions about parts of the project. Not having everything glue ready. I like that, glue ready. I'm not aware of that word. Are y'all aware of that? Glue ready. That means you got to cut out. It's the circle. Everybody using the same circle. And then it says, by not having everything glue ready in advance is a good thing. Instead, give students all of the supplies needed to create a snowman, whatever the project is, and then let them do it on their own. Encourage creativity and them not, and here, this is what will happen. If you encourage creativity and their project doesn't have to look like the person next to them project, they're not comparing the whole way through. Oh man, don't look like that. No, it shouldn't be creative. So if they're creative and they're able to add their own flair to it, then guess what? That's going to cut down with the comparing. That helps your children, believe it or not. Let's go. Next thing says, build, build in opportunities for students to find connections in learning. Got that one? Encouraging students to make connections to real life situations and identify patterns in a great way is a great way to practice critical thinking skills. The use of real world scenarios will increase rigor, relevance, and creative thinking. Remember when we talked about reality pedagogy? and we're talking about using the things in their community to help teach, it becomes real life. If you're talking about going to the grocery store, know the name of the store on the corner. Know that it's a convenience store on the corner. Know that it's Leroy's. Know, that the, know the name of the barbershop. Just start changing some of the stuff up, and guess what? It will definitely, definitely connect with your students. All right, what's happening in the comment lounge? What, what did we say? Uh-oh, there we go. I just did this with my students. Yes, they all were able to create their own nest. Yes, with whatever they had at home. It was wonderful to see what they came up with. And because if you allow them to be creative and it's not so structured, they will definitely flourish. Let's go. We're not tearing long tonight. I'm telling y'all right now. Did I miss one? Oh, connections and learning. We talked about that. And then give independence. Giving independence will allow students to become critical thinkers because they will have, they will have to create their own product with the supplies you give them. I love that. All right, let's go. This is my favorite right here. A few other techniques to encourage critical thinking are use analogies. Definitely promote interaction among students. Ask open-ended questions. Allow reflection time. Use real life problems. Allow for thinking practice. And so we're, we can be so structured in our assignments. We want them to do the math problem and come out with the answer. And that's it. We don't allow for any creativity, problem solving skills. They become data spewers when you are not allowing them to think through the problems. We don't want our students to be data spewers. That's not what we want. We want them to push and problem solve. That's why, that way when they get in the real world and they have a job, they can problem solve. They're not going to their boss every 15 minutes. What you want this to look like when I'm done? Like, okay, give me, no. You know what? Have it your way. Burger King. <laughs> Let's go. Definitely Burger King. All right. So critical thinking prepares students to think for themselves for the rest of their lives. Let me say it again. Critical thinking prepares students to think for themselves for the rest of their lives. Critical thinkers are less likely to go along with the crowd because they think for themselves. How many times you something happened and you're like, why did you do that? And you're like, I don't know. I just went with him. But if you were able to think for yourself, then you wouldn't go over there. You would factor in. Nah, I ain't going over there. They tripping over there. It's too much happening. Kids will think for themselves. We've said that 76 times. We want kids to learn to think for themselves. Well, let's equip them to do that. Let's give them the practice to learn how to think for themselves. Let's do it. And it can be done, y'all. All right. 
That's it. That's all. Says the clock on the wall. I just wanted to stop by real quick. I am at 12 minutes. I am doing good. It's PD in 15 minutes or less. That is my goal. And that's what we've been doing. So th what I say, that's it. That's all. Says the clock on the wall. Let's go back. Let's run through our vision. So you know what the vision is for extreme teachers. This is why I'm here every night because I want you all to know what the vision is. Help teachers discover their superpowers and then transform the lives around them. Being extreme makes them that teacher. All right, y'all, go be amazing on purpose. Let the bell ring. <laughs>